Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I want to talk about anxiety, stress, and the endless thought loops you can get stuck in. What do you do? Because I've been there many, many times where your life just feels overwhelming. You feel like there's so much going wrong or so much to balance. You're con constantly worrying about money and the economy and what's happening in the world. And if you pay too much attention to the news, you will feel negative by default because all of it is, I don't know if designed is the right word, but let's say designed to make you feel small and full of fear. Why is the news always so negative? Like, oh, someone was raped in America in a state you've never heard of, but that's in your head now. Like, what the fuck can I do with that information? Like, why are you telling me this? I feel bad for the person who got murdered, but like, why? Why do I need to know? Well, you don't need to know. If you're not the close family and friends of that person, like, that's just useless information, frankly, and it's gonna make you feel very negative about people, and you can walk about and think, oh, that person might be a pedo, that person might be a rapist, that person, who I think's very nice to me, might be a cunt. <laughs> I think give people the benefit of the doubt. People normally will show you who they are with their actions. Words aren't as important as what people show you, and so I've made judgments on people very quickly based on their actions, and to be honest, my mind never shifts because Often people give that correct first impression. Anyway, part of the parcel here is I think you've got to exhaust your body a bit because many of us are used to just sitting all day, using our body as a vehicle for our mind. And like, oh, I'm sat at this desk now, typing some stuff onto a calculator or doing an Excel sh spreadsheet. Like that is not what this body's for, right? So you've got to move your body more. I have considered maybe going to something like yoga or meditation classes. I, you can do a lot of stuff on your own. I am very introverted, so that would make me quite anxious, but that's kind of a follow-on to the point here. Just because you feel anxious doesn't mean you need to. Doesn't mean you have a genuine reason to be afraid. For example, a lot of people who develop panic attacks or maybe social anxiety will be afraid to go to supermarkets or busy shopping centers or like a big concert. Now, last year I went to see Green Day live and I'm seeing quite a few bands for the rest of this year and next year. I don't let it stop me. Like going to Green Day, there were over 70,000 people there and just taking it all in was like kind of freaking me out. Like there's this many of us here, that's crazy. Hope no one decides to try and bomb this place because they would they'd kill a lot of people if they wanted to. I, I felt anxious, yeah? I was at the gears, like I was walking up these steps in this massive arena. It was at the West Ham Football Club. Was it West Ham? Might have been, might have been another one. But anyway, you're looking around like, Jesus, like I'm so high up, this is kind of creepy. But guess what? Green Day were very good. The whole day was great. Like it felt incredible to be at somewhere that large scale. I've never been to anything like that in my life. Fireworks, all the different lighting, just epic. You can't get that on your own. So you've got to be like, all right, look, let's look around here. Everyone's here to have a good time. They're here because they like the bands that are playing. So it's not a hostile environment. So even though you feel anxious, you've got to tell your mind, look, you can worry if you want, but like I'm telling you, you don't need to and I'm not going to buy into it. Because often we don't question, like, oh, why do I feel anxious? We don't question, should I feel anxious? Like even like a job interview, everyone I think gets nervous being on the line, putting their self out there, possibly being rejected for a job that they really want. Ultimately, you can't avoid feeling anxious. It's a physical feeling in your body, right? But you know that you had an interview before, maybe you didn't get a job before, your life didn't die. Like you didn't stop existing because someone wouldn't give you a job. If you got a lot of pressures, like you need the job urgently in order to pay your bills. Yeah, fair enough, there's a lot of pressure there. But ultimately, you're walking into that situation only with something to gain. If you can try and shift your mind to see that, to be like, well, absolute worst case, I don't lose anything. I think that can help a bit. But ultimately, what it comes down to the most is that you are buying into your thoughts as if they are important, as if they deserve your respect. And sometimes your thoughts are just complete crap. They're not helpful. They don't help you to have a good life. And the more attention you pay them, the further you sink into self-doubt, a lack of confidence, all because you're believing something that maybe has been reinforced to you over the years Let's say you were picked on in school. A few people bullied you. 
Let's say that you have a parent that didn't treat you well. Most people would assume I'm a piece of shit because people are treating me like a piece of shit, so it must be true. Often bullies or like parents who aren't good, which is not the case for me really, but no one's perfect. Like it isn't about the kid in that situation who's getting bullied or treated badly by their parent. The parent might even get drunk and say, you were a fucking mistake. I shouldn't have even had you. That's a horrible thing to say. That's about the parent and their addiction and them not coping. It's nothing to do with the kid. The kid might believe, oh, I'm getting all these signs externally. There's something wrong with me. I'm unlovable and believe that. And they walk around constantly feeling like ashamed to be themselves. No one should feel that way. But what it comes down to is realizing you cannot stop yourself from thinking while you're alive, right? So that doesn't mean kill yourself, by the way. It means you have to just kind of detach from the idea that you need to stop your thoughts. And yeah, you might have intrusive, horrible, negative thoughts that make you think, why am I thinking that? Don't know, did you choose to? Probably not. Could it be that if you watched like crime shows, you've seen a lot of real true crime stories that some of it's in your subconscious, but you go, oh, hang on, I just picked up this knife and I had a thought about using the knife violently. Do you want to use it violently? No, I hate the idea. Well, you're not a murderer then, it's fine. But people who are anxious and have these OCD intrusive thoughts can be like, oh God, like, what does that mean about me? Maybe I do want to stab someone. No, you don't. Probably not, I hope not. But you always want that absolute certainty. Like, I want to know 100% I'm not a bad person in that case, because a lot of people can get this pure OCD and I've had it before. And there have been times where I'm like, God, like, Am I a really bad person inside? But you gotta look at the facts, are you? What have you done? What's the worst thing you've ever done? Have you stabbed someone? No? Oh, the worst thing I did was think about stabbing someone. Well, thoughts don't matter, mate. Like, the actions are what matter. The, the key here is if you picture a horse, this was a scenario from the book At Last to Life and Beyond by Paul David. If you picture a horse and it's acting wild and it's just kicking about, you try and tame the horse and like chain it down or something, which I don't think you should do because I like animals. But anyway, the horse is gonna buck, it's gonna kick out, it's gonna fight back. Best thing you can probably do is let the horse just run wild, exhaust itself out, yeah, it's relaxed. If you don't keep feeding your mind and every time you have a like insecurity go, oh God, yeah, like, should I worry about that? Like I got a spasm in my body, is that, what was it, Google cancer? Everything's cancer, fuck. Like, if you've got cancer, that sucks, right? But worrying will not change anything, ever. You need to stop seeing worrying as productive. And you might think, I don't really think it is productive, it's just an addiction, yes. But it's an addiction because you believe there is still some importance in keeping those thoughts going. And there isn't. So I really recommend the books by Paul David, books by Claire Weeks, who is dead now. Um, a lot of the stuff she wrote about was kind of relevant at the time, talking about housewives and electroshock therapy, which obviously is not relevant now. The Dare book by somebody, Barry McDonough, I think. All these books and all the people who get better do so by not caring so much. Like, oh no, I had a negative thought. So, pfft, who gives a shit? Like, perfectly normal. Life isn't perfect. Sometimes life's hard. Sometimes you're not going to feel great. And for me, it's about dedicating your spare time to stuff that's really freeing and relaxing. Like, lately I've been playing my Nintendo Switch, my PS5. I want to get back into guitar again because I've seen a really gorgeous guitar, electric guitar, but I need to justify buying that because I don't play my acoustic much at all. But there's all these different things that you can make time for when you're not constantly focused on your own mind and trying to change all the thoughts you don't like that you're having. Let them be there. Don't feed into them. Don't buy into them. Just let them go like the horse. Let it go. It's running about. Your mind's going crazy, oh, let it. I'm just gonna, you can do what you want, mind. Like, I'm trying to focus on work, so I'm not gonna pay you any attention. I'm not gonna go down that rabbit hole. I'm not gonna start Googling, trying to fix stuff that is all internal. If you need to fix an external problem, like, oh, I've got this problem in my kitchen, like something's leaking, Google that. If you've got, oh, I've got negative thoughts, why? You're not gonna get, find answers on Reddit forums and shit, mate. So anyway, I really hope this video has been helpful. Insomnia, headaches, body tension, all this stuff can go away when you just allow yourself the peace of mind. And honestly, we're all so addicted to our phones and doing stuff constantly. If you just give yourself time to sit in an empty room or like, like a quiet room, no phone, 
No guided meditation, no music, nothing. You just allow yourself to lay there and find peace in doing nothing. And it will be uncomfortable at first. If you're anything like I have been, or I, I can still be at times, it's like, God, I need something to do. I'm so bored. Oh, I recognize that I feel bored, but I'm, I'm going to rest. I'm just going to chill. I'm going to stare at the ceiling and just let my mind wander without being in the wondering, if that makes sense. Just observing. Eh, like my mind's thinking about something that went wrong today. Oh, well. Cheers for watching, guys.